does the world feel compared to six months ago? And I don't know whether it's, it's growth or oil or inflation, but are you confident that we're on the right path, that the trend is upward? Yes, I think not only does it feel better than six months ago, but it feels frankly better than in a long, long time. Uh, I think this is a period of global expansion. We probably have the kind of rapid acceleration phase behind us, but are now in a sustained expansion phase. And what's very important, uh, you know, it's synchronized. If you look at the number of countries that are growing above potential, it's very, very high. Probably it's hard to measure, but I would say close to 90% of all economies worldwide are growing above potential. So that's very, very good news from a conjunctural perspective. What's the biggest risk out there? Is it geopolitics? I don't know whether it's Brexit or um, something happening between the U.S. and China or in the, in the China, the South China Seas, or whether it's actually monetary policy, that something goes wrong, that uh, there's another temper tantrum because it's not telegraphed right when balance sheets start shrinking. You know, in theory, that could be a risk because we've seen it in the U.S. Uh, two years ago. But I think the reality is that's very unlikely. I think both the Federal Reserve, the ECB, and market participants are prepared. Uh, we've seen this movie before, so I don't really expect that to be a major problem. I think the biggest risk, as always, would be if something goes wrong at the core of the global economy, namely in the U.S. So geopolitics are a fact that it markets have to contend with at all times. That's not new. Uh, so I do think at the moment uh, we're looking at a very favorable outlook from a conjunctural perspective. What's your take on Europe? We still have the banks to deal with. Uh, but again, the euro is actually having its best performance this year, despite us talking about it breaking up six months ago. Yeah, I never quite bought into that story. I think Europe uh, is actually looking still much better than most people expect. It's interesting. I was looking at your uh, surveys and only, I think, three out of 54 economists expect growth to be above 2 percent in Europe. That shows you there is still upside potential. I think Europe is probably the best uh, positioned part of the global economy right now for all kinds of reasons. The political center has held up. I think there is a real opportunity, and that's the crux of the matter in Europe, for France to, to realign itself uh, or herself with Germany. Uh, and that would be a major change if the new president can really initiate the types of reforms that are needed for that realignment. Then I think we're, we're essentially going back to a period uh, where you have a strong core, uh, shoulder to shoulder, a Franco-German alliance, which will make everything much easier in Europe. So I'm quite hopeful uh, on the European story at the so, moment. So this would be what also streamlining of decision making, and and would they deal with the banks effectively? Well, there's many things to do, but I think the precondition for all those things, including strengthening the integration, we can come back to what that means. But I think the precondition for all of that is really for France to reform the French economy, primarily via the labor market. That's the key, uh, the key impediment to closer cooperation between France and Germany. And, and Germany rightly has become skeptical of uh, the ability of France to do that. I think we now have a new situation, a reset uh, possibility. And, and that will change, frankly, everything in Europe. If President Macron succeeds in reforming, further reforming the French labor market, I think that opens the door to a very different outlook uh, on Europe. When will we know if he's able to do that? Is it two years or does it all depend on the legislative process, of course, coming up in June? Yes, it does depend I, on that. Of course, I, I'm very optimistic that he will have a significant working majority uh, in Parliament. I think that's, uh, to me, at least a given at this point. Then the question will be, what does he do? I suspect, and, and I think rightly so, he will focus uh, immediately on the labor market as the key part of this kind of new agenda that will then uh, open up all kinds of new possibilities uh, with Germany. You have to remember that between 2004 and 14, for a 10-year period, the private sector in France produced net not a single uh, new job. And that's a devastating statistic and, of course, is at the root of this significant divergence between France and Germany over the last decade, which has been devastating for Franco-German relations. It's been devastating for Europe. If that can be reversed, if the labor markets can be fixed, I think we are looking potentially, I don't want to overdo it here, Francine, this morning, but I think we're looking at the possibility of a golden decade for, for Europe. Okay, that's pretty optimistic. Talk to me about how they can deal with non-performing loans. Does it have to be at a European level or should it still be up to individual countries to deal with them? Well, we know how we're not going to be able to deal with it, uh, namely through additional um, capital injections, I think that's going to be very difficult uh, given the new regulations. Uh, it's also important to point out this is not a problem throughout the Eurozone. It's really a problem 
to some extent in the southern rim and, and particularly in Italy. The Italian government has taken a number of measures that uh, should facilitate over time the absorption of NPLs. I do think there is a there is a huge potential there if, if one could take further steps to accelerate that process uh, then I think you could see a step change in Italian growth and that's going to be very very important because as interest rates begin to normalize as interest rates rise it's very important for Italian growth to stay above nominal growth to stay above long-term interest rates in order to continue or to reach debt sustainability and so I think it's, you know, if there is anything the, friend, the, the Italian government can do to accelerate the absorption of NPLs, I think could be an additional uh, driver of, of growth in Europe. All right. 